Good evening, everyone. My name is John Tapes, and I'm the event coordinator here at McNally Robinson Booksellers. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that McNally Robinson is located here in Treaty One territory. That's the traditional territory of the Anishinaabeg, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and the homeland of the Metis Nation. In addition, McNally Robinson Booksellers itself was on the land once occupied by the Metis community of Roostertown. We're delighted that you could all join us here, both physically within the space and virtually on YouTube, for the launch of For As Long As Zebras Are Striped by Julia Scheffler and Sarah Neville. This book, of course, reunites the team behind the McNally Robinson Book of the Year award winning uh, book, Fur Is Only Fur Deep, and we couldn't be more pleased to have them here tonight to celebrate. Just a few quick housekeeping notes before we begin, and then I'll turn things over to the creative team behind tonight's book. Uh, there'll be a conversation and a reading which will take place from the chairs just to my left. After that, there'll be an opportunity for you folks to ask questions. If you're physically here in the space, please just put up your hand. I will run over to you, Sally Jesse Raphael style, and I will pass you a microphone. Please rest assured this is not a comment on your ability to project your voice. It just ensures that those folks watching the video either tonight or in the future can actually hear the questions when they're asked. If you're watching virtually, please feel free to write any questions you might have in the chat. I'll have my phone on me and we'll be able to get to your questions as time permits. Following the event itself, we'll move along to the signing and I'll have some very exciting notes for you about signing procedure at the end. Uh, suffice to say, the only thing I'll tell you right out of the gate is that we'll ask you to pause just for a moment while we safely escort Julia and Sarah over to the signing table, after which you'll be able to come over and get your book signed. But that is more than enough for me. In for as long as zebras are striped, we join the gallopers and their foster colt Zach as they discover together just how long love can last. It's a story about foster care, adoption, and forever families told in Julia and Sarah's inimitable style. Author Julia Shetler is a Brandon Manitoba writer who believes every child deserves a loving family. Julia and her husband have a blended transracial family of 10 children. Four of their sons were adopted from China and two spent their early years in foster care. Illustrator Sarah Neville is a Winnipeg artist. She holds a Bachelor of Fine Arts Honors from the University of Manitoba. Along with illustrating, she also creates oil paintings and fabric textile artwork. Local wildlife and dogs, including her husky, frequently appear in her work. Please join me in welcoming Julia Shevlin and Sarah Neville. Good evening, everybody. Uh, just want to share before we start how happy I am that uh, you are all able to be here with us tonight. Um, I'm very pleased, of course, to be with Sarah and uh, to have you all here. Sarah? Uh, yeah, thanks for everyone joining us or watching uh, on YouTube. And yeah, I'm really excited to work on this project again with Julia and for you to all hear it. Okay. So here is the book that we've been waiting for, uh, for as long as zebras are striped. And for tonight's reading, uh, Sarah has and Peasantry Press that's here tonight, Alyssa, have brought along the artwork that was used uh, to create the book. And uh, we thought that Sarah would show you the artwork as we go along with the story. Um, as we say, it was back in about 2004, my husband and I first decided that we would consider international adoption. And then our journey took us to China four times to uh, bring home our four of our sons. Uh, they didn't just come home to Brian and I, uh, they came home to all their siblings, uh, Jordan, Jillian, Aubrey, Matthew, uh, Brittany, and Caitlin at the time. And we brought home uh, first Philip, Fuhei, then Jing Kai, then <laughs> Jaden, Rao, and Chase, Chase Rue. And um, that's been very special, vessel, very special journey for us. And these books, my book, Furs Only for Deep, uh, was written uh, before we brought Chase home. 
And uh, this book, for as long as zebras are striped, is uh, shares a story of many of the experiences that our children had. It is inspired by the emotions and experiences that, that they had um, joining our family. So if everybody's ready, we'll start. For as long as zebras are striped. The Galpers were a zebra family living happily on the grasslands. Together, they read books, played games, sang songs, and watched sunsets. At dinner time, they, sh they shared stories about helping friends. One day, Mama and Papa had exciting news. We want to be a foster family, Papa explained. What does that mean? Their twins, Chester and Lizzie asked as they moved in closer. Foster means to help something grow. We want to be a foster, we want to be foster parents to a cult whose parents cannot look after them anymore. Chester and Lizzie loved the idea Soon, Miss Domino became their family's social worker. My job is to make sure all foster cults are placed in a safe and caring home. What if the cult, what if the foster cult doesn't like us? Where will they sleep? Do we have to share our toys? Chester and Lizzie asked excitedly. Mrs. Domino answered their questions did paperwork and toured their house. Mama and Papa took classes to learn all about being foster parents. Finally, it was official. The Gallopers would be a foster family. Mama baked a cake to celebrate the news and Papa built a new bed. Then they waited. A month later, Miss Domino, the social worker, came back to visit again. Zach, she said, is a foster cult because his mom and dad can care for him. The foster family he has now is moving away, but Zach must stay here in case his mom and dad become able to look after him again. So Zach needs a new foster home. What does Zach look like? Chester swatted a fly with his tail. He has a cute smile and a spiky mane because all zebras have different patterns of stripes. Zach is unique. Ms. Domino said with a grin, just like you. How long will Zach live with us? Lizzie asked, chewing on a mouthful of grass. We're not sure. We hope that Zach's parents can take care of him again someday. If not, then maybe Zach will stay with you forever. Ms. Domino planned a visit for Zach and the Gallopers to meet. Zach quickly became friends with Chester and Lizzie. Within a few play dates, the Gallopers learned that Zach loved eating short grass and disliked going to bed at 7.30. His favorite activity was bouncing on the new bed Papa built. Ms. Domino warned the Galloper family that when the time came for Zach to move to in with them, he might feel sad or angry. Finally, Zach's moving day arrived. 
when Ms. Domino came to take Zach from his old foster home to his new foster home, Zach felt confused. He was excited about having Lizzie and Chester as playmates, but he would miss singing silly songs with Miss, Mrs. Zeke and tossing a baseball in the backyard with Big Zeke. Zach cried every time he thought about moving. He became so upset that he bolted out of the back door. It was easier to run away than to say goodbye. Ms. Domino quickly caught up to Zach and she reassured him. The Zeeks gave Zach a big farewell hug before he headed to his new home. At his new home, Zach had good days and bad days. He made new friends at kindergarten. He joined the Purple Trotters soccer team and he was very proud that Papa was the team's coach. Sometimes though, Zach felt scared. What if he wasn't perfect? What if he was naughty? Would his new parents send him to another foster home? Some days he had terrible tummy aches. Some nights he had scary dreams. Slowly though, Zach learned that Papa was a gentle stallion and Mama was a caring mare. No one said angry things to him or sent him away. He hoped the gallopers would keep him. Seasons passed. Zach was now in grade two when Miss Domino came to tell them the news. Your parents still can't look after you and they have agreed that you need a forever family. They want you to stay with the Gallopers and the Gallopers want to adopt you. Living with them is what's best for you, Miss Domino told Zach. For how long, Zach whispered. For as long as zebras are striped, Mama said, and gave him a huge hug. The gallopers and Zach were thrilled. When the adoption was complete, Papa hung Zach's adoption certificate on the living room wall. Zach was forever part of the Galloper family now. Zach was in grade three when Papa and Mama told the Colts, we want to share our love with another foster Colt. Chester and Lizzie agreed right away, but Zach didn't. Papa started building another new bed. Soon, Miss Domino came to visit the Gallopers. There's a little foal named Xander. He needs a new home. I would like you all to meet Xander at his foster home. I am not going. Zach poured out his troubles. Someone might still think that I'm a foster cold and take me away. Mama groomed his mane. That will not happen. A judge said, you are adopted into our family and we have the certificate to prove it. Remember, we will love you for as long as zebras are striped.
Zach, you could be Zig, Xander's big brother expert, Miss Domino suggested. You could teach him many new things. Zach thought for a moment. Then he grinned and gave Miss Domino a high five. Being a big brother expert sounded awesome. Papa also had an idea. He ordered the whole family matching t-shirts. Zach wore his big brother expert t-shirt every time he went to Xander's foster home. Finally, Xander's moving day arrived. The Gallopers became his new foster family. To celebrate, Papa gave little Xander a t-shirt too. On Xander's shirts were the word, little brother, and live are worth the weight. While trotting home together, the family stopped at a water hole. Xander's tail hung very low. His eyes began to fill with tears. Zach pat patted his shoulder. Moving to a new foster home can be very scary. That's why I'm your big brother expert. I'll help you. Lizzie and Chester added, We've waited a long time for another little foster brother, and you're worth the wait. And here is the last page. Congratulations, Sander. We will love you as long as zebras are striped. And the little Xander, who was the youngest little foster colt, is having his grade 12 graduation. The end. Thank you very much. Um, at this time, I was uh, gonna open the floor for questions. You could ask uh, myself or Sarah would love to ask you a question about all her beautiful artwork and she can lift them up and show them to you and talk about colors and everything. So we'll wait for some questions. And does anybody have a question? If you do, just put up your hand and I'll wander over to you at the microphone. Oh, yes. Why did you choose Zebra? Oh, that's a great question. That's a great question. Why did I pick zebras? Well, there was a hint in the book. Did anybody get the hint? <laughs> what was the hint about zebras and their stripes? Did you get the hint over there? Thank you, Carwin. Oh, oh, okay. We'll, just, we'll get to you next, Carwin, okay? So I know Chase over here was asking, why we pick zebras? And I said there was a hint in the book about the zebra stripes. How long do they last? A long, long, long time. <laughs> yeah, the, the zebra stripes last a long, long time. Do zebras have all have identical stripes? Do any zebras have the same set of stripes? No, they don't. Every zebra's stripe is kind of like your thumbprint. It's unique to you. And zebra's stripes are unique to them. So nobody has the same stripes. So they're all unique, just like every child is unique. Thanks for asking that, Chase. Carmen? Carwin? Were the pictures hard to draw? Ooh, that's a good question, too. Um, they did take some time. They took quite a while. Uh, Julia wrote the book first and then decided how many words would be on each page. And then we talked about what illustrations should be on that page. And then from there, it took quite a while to do them. We were really lucky because we had a fantastic, I had a fantastic 
editor. Her name is Mrs. Humby, and she's a fantastic editor. So she helps decide too what words will go on what page, and then we would decide from there uh, together. Everybody would decide what kind of pictures we thought would look good on that page. But Sarah has an artistic talent, so she's being kind of humble here because <laughs> she's very talented. So yeah. we kind of we kind of let her her go with the pictures. Yeah. And uh, this is Humvee. Uh, she also let me know how much space I had on each page. So she would say, there's this many words and you'll have this much space. So on my, on my drawings, there's um, some numbers next to it. It was telling me how much space I would have because some pages have more words. So then I'd have less page to do the picture. See? Well, sometimes she has two pictures on one page. Yeah. And sometimes just one picture on page. Or sometimes there is um, two, like the picture goes on both. Oh, like, um, is there one that goes on both? Yeah, there's a couple like that. Like that. Oh, so yeah. You're there's saying one. that you would have to go over there and make sure to not put anything important in the middle. So then it would get lost in the fold. It's very helpful. Yes. My question is related to your first book and your second book. So the first book, I believe, was about panda, but animal was a panda, and the next one is zebras. Does this mean you're on a black and white animal theme going <laughs> forward? Have you picked skunks for your next book? <laughs> <story? laughs> oh, so tell me where you're going. <laughs> Chinese juice dawn. I have no idea where I'm going next. <laughs> it's just kind of coincidence, I think. I just wanted to, to truthfully this time, I kind of was looking at animals that, that didn't, that were each animal was very unique. And uh, that's basically why I came up with the zebra really was because they were unique. And then you always play around with the animals and you play around with the title and then you move it back and forth between different animals and i just kind of like the way the title flowed with this one so i thought okay let's go with the zebra that's good that's great but why i went with so many zed names i haven't figured that one out yet <laughs> <laughs> some more questions um when you were writing book did you use a limited vocabulary or were you just using words and phrases that are more commonly used with you know your other audience? Well, that's the tricky part. Like people, not everyone is writing children's books is a little tough because the content and vocabulary, like this book could be seen, could be seen as a fairly heavy content for a young reader. So that's why you kind of, I chose to use animals for that reason, because children can kind of relate to animals um, with the whole idea of fostering. Um, the vocabulary, there can be a few challenge words in there for children, uh, but trying to make it, um, remembering that it's a children's book, probably read a lot by adults. So you kind of got to find a blend in there that, that works. So it is harder to pan than you would think. And were there any other questions? <laughs> I always wonder what Sarah's gonna do with all this beautiful artwork afterwards. Is what I always <laughs> wonder what she does. Or does she have this big temple trunk she keeps it all in? <laughs> I'm not really sure. Um, yeah, that's kind of where it is right now. It's safely stored. The first book called their illustrations are safely stored in my office at home. And then that's where these will be too, because for the last two years, we did these, uh, this book two years ago. Before COVID. Right? Yeah. And then, um, or yeah, I guess longer than that then. So they've been safely stored with peasantry press until today. And then we'll go from there. Yeah. I think for me, I don't know how Sarah feels about this, but for me, um, doing a book together is really about teamwork and it's finding, 
You know, I just felt so lucky that I had found somebody that I felt I could really work closely with. With Peasantry Press is, is uh, wonderful to work with. They're a Winnipeg-based publishing company here. They're excellent. Alyssa's here, and uh, she's excellent to work with. And Sarah is also, because there's a lot of back and forth, and there's a lot of tricky questions to answer, right? And everybody kind of has their opinion on how it should go. And we kind of talk about it, and then we decide what how it's best to move forward with it. So it's it's really good collaboration that way. Yeah, I agree. I've been very lucky to work with you and Peasantry Press twice now. Um, both times been amazing and the teamwork, like you said, it has to flow and it really does. Yeah. yeah. And we're, we're very fortunate or I feel very lucky this year that we're launching now in November again uh, before the Christmas season because, you know, this Christmas season is the time that people do uh, typically buy books that in Love to Read month. Uh, so it's been good timing all around that way too. And November is also a uh, national adoption month yeah. as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And um, when I, we did our international adoptions, we did them through uh, Winnipeg Child and Family Services here in Winnipeg. Our first two adoptions uh, were facilitated through them. Our social worker was through them. And the second two adoptions were facilitated by adoption options here in Winnipeg, which are also um, is an excellent, excellent uh, company to work with. So um, the books are kind of a celebration of that journey for me. So And for my husband, Ryan, who's back there at the back. Uh, none of that would have been possible without Ryan. So always grateful for that. <laughs> Is there any more questions? I would like this at this time, then, if I could just ask Alyssa to come up here from Present Press. Just have a. <laughs> and see if Alyssa would like to say anything, Alyssa. Would you like to? Sure. Yeah. Sure. I did not. No, I was coming up here, uh, but since I have Mike, I just thought I would uh, say Julia and Sarah are uh, dreams to work with. Um, I really hope people read and love this book. I hope they believe in it like we do. I think it's a really important and really powerful uh, story about family. So I just thank you all for coming out here and supporting Julia and Sarah. And uh, yeah, the, the best thing you can do for an author is to review and recommend their book as well so uh, if you read it and love it especially um give it a review on mcnelly's website on amazon um yeah and support the author and illustrator that way they're really fun to work with i think it's a really great book so. thank you thank you and Alyssa. at this time i just have some cards i would just like to pass along my thanks uh to you and uh all everybody at uh, peasantry press and of course for uh uh, Francie Humby as well. Uh, she was my editor. Thank you. So Thank you. much. Let me give you a hug here. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. And at this time, too, I'd also like to thank McNally Robinsons. Uh, they're always, uh, John is a great host to work with as well. Uh, <laughs> He's really good at re responding to emails very quickly, <laughs> and uh, that's always greatly appreciated uh, for us. Uh, as you may have read there, I live on Brandon, so, um, you know, everything is uh, has to be kind of communicated that way. So I, I truly appreciate that, and I'd like to thank McDowell uh, Booksellers for, for hosting us tonight. Thank you very much. Well, thank you both. It's such a pleasure to have you back here and uh, just delightful to have you here to properly celebrate this book as well. So thank you very much for the kind words. We will be moving along to the signing uh, right now. So we will transport Julie and Sarah over to the signing table in a relatively undramatic way. We will be walking. And, uh, <laughs> at that point, you're more than free to join us over there and get a copy of the book signed before you leave. We have copies at the signing table. We have copies at the cash desk. Feel free to get a copy signed before you pay for it. Please just pay for the book at some point tonight before you leave. <laughs> we are so very grateful to Peasantry Press as well for publishing this wonderful book. It's another incredible collaboration between these two that we're just proud to have on our shelves. 
We're also so grateful to all of you for joining us here tonight, both virtually and in person as well. Thank you for your attention, for uh, just the sense of community this evening, and for all your questions as well. The video of this launch will remain live, so if you'd like to revisit it or share it with anybody, please feel free to do so. It's just on our YouTube channel. But otherwise, I'll just quietly close by asking you all to join me one final time in acknowledging Julia Shepard and Sarah Neville. Thank you all for coming.